This is the story of Nathan Gerard Dunlap, born April 8, 1974. Nathan was raised by his adoptive father and biological mother, who married each other when Nathan was only a few months old. He had never met his biological father. Nathan was raised in Chicago, Illinois, Memphis, Tennessee, and Michigan, and then moved to Colorado in 1984. Nathan's mother struggled with mental health issues and was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Nathan committed several armed robberies by the age of 15, first using a golf club and then graduating to firearms. He spent time incarcerated at a juvenile detention center, and due to an erratic episode, he was sent to a psychiatric hospital. When released, he began selling drugs. Nathan was arrested five times on misdemeanor offenses in 1993. Nathan began working at the Chuck E. Cheese restaurant in May 1993 and was fired in July after a disagreement he had with his supervisor over schedule hours. Friends of Nathan said he was frustrated over the firing, and told a former co-worker that he planned to get even about being Nathan fired. Nathan entered the restaurant at 9 p.m., where he ordered a ham and cheese sandwich and played an arcade game. He then hid in a restroom about 10 minutes from the restaurant's closing. He then exited the restroom after closing at 10.05 p.m. and shot five employees with a 25 caliber semi-automatic pistol. Nathan first shot Sylvia Crowell, 19, who was cleaning the salad bar. She was hit from close range in the right ear and was mortally wounded. Ben Grant, 17, was fatally shot near the left eye as he was vacuuming. Colleen O'Connor, 17, pleaded for her life and sank to her knees, but Nathan fatally shot her once through the top of her head. Bobby Stevens, 20, the lone survivor of the shooting, returned to the restaurant after taking a smoke break outside, thinking the noise he heard from inside the restaurant were children popping balloons nearby. As Stevens walked into the restaurant and unloaded utensils into the dishwasher, Nathan came through the kitchen door, raised the handgun at him, and fired a shot that struck Stevens in the jaw. Stevens fell to the floor and played dead. Nathan then forced Marge Kohlberg, 50, the store manager, to unlock the safe. After she opened it, Nathan shot her in the ear. As he was taking the cash out of the safe, Nathan fired a second fatal shot through Kohlberg's other ear after he noticed she was still moving. Stevens escaped through a back door and walked to the nearby Mill Pond apartment complex, where he pounded on a door to alert someone that he and others had been shot at the restaurant. Stevens was hospitalized at Denver General Hospital in fair condition. As authorities arrived on the scene, they found two bodies in the restaurant's hallway, a third in a room off the hallway, and the fourth in the manager's office. Crowell was sent to Denver General Hospital, where she was declared brain dead. She died from her injuries the next day at Aurora Regional Medical Center. The manager that fired Nathan was not even working the night of which the gruesome murders took place. So Nathan fled the scene with $1,500 worth of cash and game tokens he stole from inside the restaurant. He was arrested at his mother's apartment 12 hours later. Nathan was found guilty of four counts of first-degree murder, attempted murder, robbery, and burglary in 1996. On May 17th of that year, Nathan was sentenced to death and an additional 108 years. On May 22, 2013, Nathan's execution was put on hold, as Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper decided against executing Nathan or granting him clemency and instead signed a temporary reprieve in 2013. The reprieve meant that as long as Hickenlooper was governor, Nathan would not likely be executed. Soon after the state of Colorado abolished the death penalty. Ultimately Nathan Dunlap will stay in prison until the day he dies. Through all the chaos and desperation of trying to save lives in the restaurant that night, the macabre sounds of the Chuck E. Cheese's music and the dancing animated figures on the stage. They couldn't get the music or the dancing puppets to stop. It was horrifying, one police officer said. Something you don't want to imagine. Bobby Stevens lived that night because he played just, uh, dead. He walked into the uh, door, walked through the door, uh, walked right up to me and shot me. Um, 
What I remember seeing is him with a smile on his face. I remember him raising his hand and then um, seeing the smoke and the sparks. Everything like Bobby that. was the fourth person shot that night. Margaret Kohlberg, the last. When I saw the last couple at the counter, getting their little prizes and stuff, I went to the men's room. You go into the men's room and you look in the mirror. Right. And I was I was still kind of iffy on it. And, you know, I went ahead and kind of, like I said, hyped myself up and came out and started shooting. When you were hyping yourself up, what were you doing? Just looking in the mirror like, are you really going to do this? And I'm like, yeah. Like, so I talked to myself. And so you got hyped up and you walked straight out? Walked straight out the bathroom. Shot Sylvia. And once it happened, it was all over. Does it bother you that they're dead, Nathan? No. Why? I guess because for me, death ain't nothing. I don't know, I'm not afraid of death. And you didn't take the time to think that their life was so important to somebody else, right? So you walk out of the bathroom. You've decided what? She's about to die. These people have to die. Are about to die. These people are about to die. Mm -hmm. I, like, I, didn't, I didn't see the salad bar. I didn't see, uh, see, I didn't hear the music. Uh, it was like a, just blackness, just empty. Sylvia, kind, sparkle, a shining light. Her family and friends adored her. Where was Sylvia? At the salad bar. Did she see you? No. It was like she had a glow around her, so to speak. So you just held the gun up and fired, but looked the other way. I knew where she looked. I knew where she was standing. I knew she didn't see. And I, I mean, in my head, I saw, like, seen the target, so to speak. And I placed the gun there. And I know she got shot. When, when the first shot went off, everybody jumped, including me. And like I said, I mean, it happened so quick before Sylvia even hit the ground because I heard her fall. I had already shot. What's his name? Ben. How far away from him were you? Probably closer. Probably closer than we are to him. Ben Grant. Fun. Loving. Full of life. He was part of so many people's futures. I remember the sound went off. And, he, and when he jumped, I jumped because it scared me. I shot him, and I spun him back the same way he was coming around. I spun him the other, back around the same way. And that was the last thing I saw. I never saw him hit the ground or nothing. And then, you know, I was already turned around, going toward uh, Colleen. Colleen, she was 17. Strong, vibrant, funny. They miss her so much. And Colleen saw you coming. Yeah, I, I don't understand why she sat there and watched. I was expecting her to run, but she didn't run. That's why I turned around so quick. But she didn't run. She stayed right there and just watched. And what happened if she had run? I was shot her. Did you ever ha have eye contact with Colleen? Oh, yeah. That's what brought me kind of down. Did Colleen say anything? She's like, no. She, was like, she shook her hand like, no. But she did say no. Yeah, she said no. I said she didn't. She didn't beg for a life or nothing like that. What if she had, Nathan? When she said no, she sort of begged, you know. She, she, you know, she sort of begged. And it pissed me off because it kind of like bought, people gonna say I don't have compassion, but I know I got compassion. And it bought this compassion. Now I'm like, you know, why are you doing this to me? You know, why are you? trying to make me like you. You know, it's easy to shoot you when I don't like you. And it's like, you know, why are you trying to make me like you? Because she said no? When she said no, it's like she's kind of big, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you just sit here and watch me shoot two people. What do you, what do you mean, no? Do you understand why she was looking for compassion? Oh, yeah, I totally understand. I agree with her and everything. Nathan, why? Why? 
about what? Why did you kill them? They were witnesses to a crime. That's why. Did you have any feeling? I had no feelings at all. Excitement? No, excitement, no nothing. But Colleen brought that back. Right. And what were you thinking at the time? I didn't have no choice. Why? Everybody always has a choice. Because she had seen me shoot two other people. It is going to be inconceivable to people who finally hear this that you didn't have any feelings about human life. I didn't have any feelings about human life until after I shot Colleen. And what did you feel? I felt like, how can I do this? started you got to keep on finishing and when you thought how could you do this what did you think of yourself I was just sad I'm not explaining to you I was just sad but you kept going because I had to finish it I had to finish Bobby Stevens lived he wants the families to know how hard he tried to help them and how sorry for them he is you fired he ducked yeah you hit him yeah. Did you think you killed him? No, I knew I didn't kill him. Why didn't you stop and shoot him again? I don't like blood. You don't like blood? No. I would have to, if I was to do that, I would have to sit there and watch him. Margaret Kohlberg was a mother, a wife, a best friend. Radiant, supportive. Life without her will never be the same. I went to the office. Mark looked up and said, can I help you or something? And she saw the gun. And uh, that's when I heard Bobby get up and run out. Had her open up the safe, and I shot her. Please let me know down in the comments and section. Also, please, like, share, and subscribe. I am Jimmy Hex. Thanks for watching. She was messed up already, and I didn't want her. She sounded like she was in pain. So that's why I shot her. And you walked out of Chuck E. Jesus. Jogged, ran. He left, went to a friend's and counted the money, then to his girlfriend's. Both places, he thought the same thing. It's hard to breathe. 